President, Mr. Vice President-elect, distinguished guests, and fellow citizens. In the highest tradition of our form of government, we are here today to inaugurate the 36th President of the United States. It is a great honor for me as Chairman of the Committee on Arrangements for this event to begin our program by presenting the United States Marine Band under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Albert Schofer, who will now play a song we all love, Stars and Stripes Forever. <laughs> Will the audience now rise as the most reverend Robert E. Lacey pronounced the invocation? Almighty and eternal God, we ask a blessing upon all who are gathered here today to honor the chief, chief executive and the vice president of our nation. We pray that Almighty God may grant to the leader of our country wisdom and understanding, strength and courage. In these days of stress and strife, in the hour of fateful decision, may God make clear to our president the path of honor and of peace, the path of freedom and justice, the path of brotherhood and truth, that truth that makes men free. Amen. We will now have the pleasure of hearing a special arrangement of America the Beautiful by Miss Leontine Price, accompanied by the United States Marine Band. Rabbi Hyman Judah Shachtel will now lead us in prayer. Almighty God, we thank thee for this inaugural, the living historic witness to our faith in thee and to the choice and actions of a free people. Here at the capital of our nation, the very sight of which exalts our hearts and awakens thrilling memories of the preeminent men of our resplendent past, we pray for thy blessings upon our beloved president, the vice president, and those associated with them in the sacred trust of leadership. The Speaker of the House of Representatives will now administer the oath of office to the Vice President-elect. Do you 
solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I, Hubert Horatio Humphrey, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That you take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. With, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office about which I am about to enter. So help you God. So help me God. The Reverend George R. Davis will now lead us in prayer. Please rise. God of our fathers, to whom persons are of supreme importance, we lift up this day a man to be set apart in a special way. In our love and prayers through this historic and exalting ceremony, we lift him up as we do the vice president and their gracious families. To thy strong help we commend them and all men and women in all areas and branches of our nation's life who share the terrible splendor of leadership and authority. Thus we pray in the name of him who is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. The oath of office will now be administered to the President by the Chief Justice of the United States. You, Lyndon Baines Johnson, do solemnly swear. I, Lyndon Baines Johnson, do solemnly swear. That you will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The office of the Presidency of the United States. The office of the Presidency of the United States. And will, to the best of your ability. And will, to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. My fellow countrymen, on this occasion, the oath I have taken before you 
and before God is not mine alone, but ours together. We are one nation and one people. Our faith as a nation and our future as a people rests not upon one citizen, but upon all citizens. That is the majesty and the meaning of this moment. For every generation, there is a destiny. For some, history decides for this generation, the choice must be our own. Even now, a rocket moves toward Mars. It reminds us that the world will not be the same for our children or even for ourselves in a short span of years. The next man to stand here will look out on a scene that is different from our own because ours is a time of change, rapid and fantastic change, bearing the secrets of nature, multiplying the nations, placing in uncertain hands new weapons for mastery and destruction, shaking old values and uprooting old ways. Our destiny in the midst of change will rest on the unchanged character of our people and on their faith. They came here, the exile and the stranger, brave but frightened, to find a place where a man could be his own man. They made a covenant with this land, conceived in justice, written in liberty, bound in union. It was meant one day to inspire the hopes of all mankind, and it binds us still. If we keep its terms, we shall flourish under this covenant of justice, liberty, and union. We have become a nation, prosperous, great, and mighty, and we have kept our freedom. But we have no promise from God that our greatness will endure. We have been allowed by him to seek greatness with the sweat of our hands and the strength of our spirit. I do not believe that the great society is the ordered changeless and sterile battalion of the ants. It is the excitement of becoming, always becoming, trying, probing, falling, resting, and trying again, but always trying and always gaining.
generation with toil and tears we have had to earn our heritage again if we fail now then we will have forgotten in abundance what we learn in hardship that democracy rests on faith that freedom asks more than it gives and the judgment of God is harshest on those who are most favored if we succeed it will not be because of what we have but it will be because of what we are not because of what we own but rather because of what we believe nation of believers underneath the clamor of building and the rush of our day's pursuits we are believers in justice and liberty and union and in our own union. We believe that every man must someday be free. And we believe in ourselves. And that is the mistake that our enemies have always made in my lifetime, in depression and in war, they have awaited our defeat. Each time, from the secret places of the American heart, came forth the faith that they could not see or that they could not even imagine. And it brought us victory, and it will again. <laughs> For this is what America is all about. It is the uncrossed desert and the unclimbed ridge. It is the star that is not reached and the harvest that's sleeping in the unplowed ground. Is our world gone? We say farewell. Is a new world coming? We welcome it, and we will bend it to the hopes of man. To these trusted uh, public servants uh, and to my family and those close friends of mine who have uh, followed me down a long winding road and to all the people of this union and the world I will repeat today what I said on that sorrowful day in November last year. I will lead, and I will do the best I can.
but you. You must look within your own hearts to the old promises and to the old dream. They will lead you best of all. For myself, I ask only in the words of an ancient leader, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this, thy people, that is so great?
fellow countrymen. On this occasion, the oath I have taken before you and before God is not mine alone, but ours together. We are one nation and one people. Our faith as a nation and our future as a people rests not upon one citizen, but upon all citizens. That is the majesty and the meaning of this moment. 